Joule is the crown jewel of the Kerbola system, a big green gas giant. But the gas giants we know in real life aren't green at all. So is this even possible? What could explain this green color? Our plan to figure this out will be this. Find a possible candidate substance that is green and check whether it is actually in a gaseous state when around Joule. We do this because each type of gas has its own properties. Not all substances have the same melting and boiling point. The phase of a substance, gas, liquid or solid for example, is dependent on mainly two things. The temperature and the surrounding pressure. Both the temperature and pressure in Joule's atmosphere are very different from Earth and Kerbin. So we cannot just assume that a substance that is a gas here on Earth would also be one on Joule. So to check what the phase of our substance is, you can use a so-called phase diagram. A diagram that is different for each pure substance. On the x-axis we have temperature and on the y-axis we have pressure. When there is a constant pressure you will see that a substance goes from solid to liquid to gas as the temperature increases and the particles become more energetic. With constant temperature you will notice that a substance generally goes from a gas to a liquid to a solid as pressure is increased and the particles in the substance are being pushed together. So it is important to know what the conditions are in the atmosphere around Joule so that we can determine if our candidate substance in fact can still be a gas at that temperature and pressure. Lucky for us we can find a diagram on the wiki page of Joule that shows both the pressure and temperature at different altitudes around Joule. Now if we have a candidate gas we can test whether it is a realistic candidate using these diagrams. And some of you viewers have mentioned one such candidate gas, chlorine. Chlorine is a yellowish green gas and it consists out of two chlorine atoms. So I simply checked for multiple altitudes the correct temperature and pressure and that gives us a corresponding point on the phase diagram of chlorine and thus also its phase. I kinda eyeballed it so forgive me if the values are not too exact. But from what I gathered, chlorine would be a solid for the majority of what KSP states is the actual atmosphere of Joule. And it would start to go from a liquid to a gas between 180 and 200 kilometers from what we call the surface. So that is right at the edge basically. So an atmosphere of purely chlorine is kinda extreme. Not only because of it being a solid for the majority, but also due to the fact that it's quite difficult for our planet to form with that much chlorine, as it is certainly not as abundant as other gases like hydrogen, helium and methane, which are the gases that make up the usual gas planets. So can it be the case that Joule has a mixture of gases, like hydrogen, helium and or methane in the lower parts of the atmosphere and chlorine on the top? That way you wouldn't need as much. Sadly, no. Chlorine is quite a bit denser and it would sink underneath any other common gas giant gas. But let's just say that this would work. Then there is still something I wanted to point out that might be a problem. You can see right here the temperature of the upper atmosphere of Joule shoots up very quickly. Which is weird because Joule is so far away from Kerbal that direct sunlight would not be able to cause this. This is also a problem that scientists faced when investigating Jupiter. And for many years, people weren't sure about the origin of this extra heat. As it turns out, the powerful auroras at the poles of Jupiter are generating enough heat to heat up the upper layers of the atmosphere. So how do these auroras form? Well on Earth, it is being caused by charged particles that are being released by solar storms and when they arrive at Earth, those charged particles will be then funneled in by Earth's magnetic field so that they will arrive at the North and South Pole. When these charged particles hit molecules in the atmosphere, energy is being released in the form of light, which we will see in the form of auroras. The magnetic field of Jupiter can also direct charged particles around it towards its poles. In the case of Jupiter, the origin of these particles is not that of a Sun, but actually Io. Its volcanic activity launches particles into space to then be picked up by Jupiter's magnetosphere. And it is thought that this could also be the case for Saturn, but in that case it is being caused by Enceladus and its geysers launching water up into space that will then get ionized by the sun's light, and then be affected by Saturn's magnetic field. So this could be an explanation for Joule's increased temperature in the upper atmosphere. But then we would need an explanation for the origin of the charged particles in this case. And that would be Val, 
a moon of jewel that has active geysers. Anyways, these are some of the ideas I wanted to share and I hope that people have learned a bit of new stuff. If you like these videos, then be sure to watch some more and maybe consider liking. Thanks, bye bye.